Hey guys, Kalia here, coming to you live from my sister's house. So today, God sent me to uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 3, and it says, it reads, And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in trembling. So this is Paul talking to the people there. And so I'll start from the first part actually. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, uh, save Jesus Christ and him cru crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Um, Howbeit we speak wisdom amongst them. So it's the same. We speak wisdom amongst them. Who, you know, have the knowledge of these things. So, like, a pastor, you would speak, you know, wisely about the things of God. But, like, someone who's, like, not, who doesn't know, you know, the church terminology and stuff. You just talk, you know, as the Spirit leads. So, hey, with that, that's just saying how, like, we, or I got, when he sent me the First Corinthians 2 and 3, I got from that, um... I was talking about fear and trembling, saying like how I came to you with fear and trembling. And so that just reminds me, like everyday life for me is like fear and trembling. You know, it says God's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of, you know, power, love, of some mind. But man, sometimes it's scary out there trying to, uh, you know, tell and proclaim the goodness of God to people. Sometimes it's scary, and so that it gives me uh, courage, you know, to keep going forward and still trying my best, you know, to just, I just have to make sure that I pray every time and say, you know, let remind myself that God is with me. Because, you know, even Paul, Paul, he was afraid too. He said, this is Paul talking, he said, and, you know, I was weak, you know, his flesh, well, not weak flesh, but, like, his spirit man was weak because, like, he was afraid because, um, like, he was afraid, not, I don't think necessarily afraid that he, that they were going to, like, hurt him or anything, but he was just afraid because he, like, didn't know what to say, like, I know for me, I don't want to say anything wrong or I don't want to say anything to like offend people so I have to really be careful about what I say sometimes it makes me afraid to speak because you know you don't want to you got to be careful what you say because you don't want to hurt anybody um but yeah today just a wrap up of today today um Today, God was just telling me, you know, well, not just telling me, but showing me, you know, that we can pray for things. Not this is our, this is going off subject a little bit from the scripture. We can pray for things. Like we can pray for the biggest of things. And you know, He'll make it happen. If it's His will, He'll make it happen. But we have to know, you know, that. With each thing, and I'm learning this now, with each thing that we pray for, it is just like, it's a step. Like we, I've heard many times that this is like a now generation. Like we want everything now, we want to have it now. And so it's like, um, like we expect, you know, like a full course meal. Maybe he just wants to give us, you know, like breadsticks for right now, you know? You know, he wants us to eat on the breadsticks right now. So basically what I'm saying, 
because I'm hungry, so I'm talking about food right now. But basically, what I'm saying is that um, you know, he wants us to start off with the small things first. You know, if we have a full, a full, um, full course meal, you know, maybe we don't have what it takes. Like the money, maybe we can't pay the cost for a full course meal right now. Maybe all we can afford is breadsticks, you know. Maybe all that we're all the time we're putting in, all of you know, the stuff that we're doing. Maybe all we can, you know, well breadsticks. Breadsticks are actually usually free, like breadsticks and water. But like an appetizer, like mozzarella sticks. We'll go with mozzarella sticks. Say you can only afford mozzarella sticks right now because that's all you have the money for. So that means you gotta you gotta save up your money, you know, if you want to get bigger and better things, bigger and better food items. So with that in terms of, you know, relationship with Christ, we gotta, you know, start spending time with him. We gotta save up our money. We can't spend our money and all these other or our we can't spend our time we can't spend our uh focus we can't place our focus on all these other things if it's taken away from the funds or the you know the funds the storage part like the the things that i'm using to keep in the area for me to get closer to christ can't think of a word right now, but it it I got the word for the money. It's funds, but I don't know. Can't think of a word. So just think of funds in the terms of like a like a holding place. I don't know. Just imagine a basket. That's all I can think of right now. But um, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes we you know we do have the money. You know. But sometimes we have to wait for the um like the other dishes to be made, you know. So we have the breadsticks already because that's free breadsticks and water, and you know they made the mozzarella sticks, so that's coming out right now. And so then, what do you want to order next? Uh, maybe we'll order like spaghetti or something. Plate of spaghetti. That's my favorite dish so maybe we ordered spaghetti so we're eating the mozzarella sticks and the bread sticks and the water right now but we're waiting for the spaghetti so you know it's not that you can't afford it but maybe you know the uh, chef is preparing you know preparing your food right now so you know with God you know maybe he gives us the small things but you know, it's still it's still feeding us, you know, like we're not starving, we're not you know, he's still feeding us and we just have to wait. We just have to wait, you know, for the food to be done. We have to wait for the blessing to manifest because as it says in Ecclesiastes three, there is for everything there's a season and time and the time to live and the time to die and the time to be born and it's just talking about seasons um so with that it's like a lot of times if if it, if we feel like we aren't if we feel like we aren't being fed enough then we'll complain we'll complain to the waiter who's bringing it we'll complain and say i want to talk to the manager the manager of this restaurant because I feel like I'm paying too much money for this small portion of food or the quality of this food isn't good enough. I'm paying too much money, you know, for this type of quality of food. And so it's like, I mean, sometimes they deserve it, but sometimes they try their hardest. Or sometimes we're just really ungrateful. So I try not to complain at restaurants. That's y'all people. I don't complain. I try not to complain. Because sometimes I'm paying the money. Sometimes I'm not paying the money. Like, as in people are treating me. I'm not, like, stealing or anything. But, yeah, it's just, like, sometimes we just, like, complain when, you know, the chef or somebody. Well, yeah, the chef because, you know, they have to cook. But the chef is, you know, trying their best. They're putting all their best ingredients into this and 
to feed us, you know, nutrients to get us, get into our body, into our blood system, and we're just complaining. And, like, I know if I were a chef and I tried my hardest and I cooked my best dish for the person that I, that ordered the food, and they complain, I'd be highly upset. And I would say, you know what, I'm not making anything else because this is what I made for you because this is what you ordered. And so, with that being said, with God, we can't really complain about, you know, the situations that aren't, you know, tasting right in our mouth or we're feeling like it's taking too long or feeling like it's too cold as in like, oh, you did this too late, so it's not it's not important anymore. Too hot, it's like, oh, you're doing this too soon for us. We need to just, you know, if it's too hot, let it sit a little bit. If it's too cold, then maybe it wasn't meant, you know, for you to get it. Or maybe it's supposed to be cold. Like, sometimes we order stuff and we don't even know what it's supposed to be like. Sometimes we order stuff and we just get it just because everyone else said it was good. Like, I remember I ordered this one thing. It was like a pumpkin spice latte or something like that from Starbucks. And I got it because my friend said it was good. And I tried it. And that was the worst tasting thing ever. Like, that was like 4 or $5 down the drain. I mean, I drunk it because it was like 4 or $5. But that was like, that had to be like the worst tasting Thing. Well, no, because medicine is the worst tasting thing. But a drink that's supposed to be high quality, that was like the worst tasting thing, in my opinion. And we just, you know, I got it because someone said it was good, you know? But, I don't know, I'm not really a coffee drinker, so maybe that's why it was not good to me. But, yeah, we need to... Just make sure that when we're praying, you know, when we're putting our request in, which is ordering, petitioning God, um, we need to make sure that we know what we're asking for, and we need to make sure that we can afford what we're asking for, because you don't want to ask for it and then get it and then not have what it takes to digest it. Like, you don't want to order, you wouldn't order a baby two-year-old estate. I would not give Naraya a steak. Not a full T-bone. No. Because she wouldn't appreciate it. She would chew it up, spit it out, and put it all over the floor. No. That's hard-earned money on the floor. And, like, we don't understand that. We, like, we waste things. We waste so much, and we don't even understand that we waste it. Like, if we, we can get full off of, you know, like, if we eat enough breadsticks and, um, well, if we eat enough breadsticks and we eat enough mozzarella sticks and we have enough water, we could get full. But we also need to know and make sure and seek God because although we could get full off of that, is that what God has, is that all that God has for us or does God have more for us because you can't get your nutrients off of a breadstick and you know mozzarella stick diet so if God is saying I want you to have more I want you to have some of this steak or some of this spaghetti or some of this chicken or whatever and we need to add vegetables too you know some of the things that help roughage roughage helps helps clean your system so um, yeah if you go through rough times that helps clean your system too I'll tell you that much not one thing I've learned huh, one thing I learned this week was being humble oh hard times will humble you and being humble most of the time is not fun um, but it's definitely necessary. It's definitely necessary. It's definitely needed. And I thank God for it because if we aren't humbled, then we our head would just be all up in the sky. We have a big head. We'd be so prideful. And it's just, that's not, it's not of God, you know. We have to 
always try to have a mind of Christ. We have to try to have a heart of Christ. And our prayer needs to be that, you know, that we see people the way that he sees people and that we treat people the way that he treats people. And, yeah, we just need to, we need to be good, good with people, good with things. My sister is loud. I don't know if you hear or not, but she's kind of loud. But, um, yeah, just, but even, like, God was telling me today, and what I was getting from him today, was that, um, you know, as long as you're faithful in the small things, he will make us, uh, you know, supreme over bigger things, you know, and it's like, it's gradual steps, like, you can't, it's, and it is like a staircase, you know, it's one step at a time, you can't, t I mean, you can take three steps at a time, but it's like, it's very uncomfortable, like, it's easier, and it's better feeling if you take it step by step, like, you can't really, you know, take, get on the first step, or you can't go from the bottom a staircase at the top of the staircase in like 0.5 seconds like that's almost impossible unless you're flying but so like if God elevates us yeah like that yeah but on our own on our own we can't do that on our own we have to walk it up it manually with our two the, the the feet that we have the two feet the bottom of the feet is what we have to do that with um I was watching William Murphy. William Murphy is very inspiring to me a lot of times. I love watching his periscopes. I say that sometimes. I said it yesterday. But no, I said it two days ago. Um I have some notes. I'm just looking at them real quick. Cause there was something I wrote down I want to say. I don't think I remember it though. Um Oh yeah, he was telling me that we have to focus on what is in front of us and we can't, you know, blur our vision with the future because, like, we can be so caught up with, you know, oh, God says that I'm going to do this in the future and God says I'm going to do that in the future. But it's like, okay, so how are you going to do that if you aren't even doing what you need to do right now, if you aren't you know, helping the people that he has for you right now, how or why would he send you the people in the future? Are you just going to do the same thing with the people in the future and say, oh, I can't wait to get more people to help in the future? And it's like, okay, I have people for you now to help, and you're not even helping them. So it's like, and this is this is to me. It's not like anyone's like, I'm talking to me right now. Like, sure, I love to have more people in the on-campus ministry. Yes, yes, I definitely would. Not even going to act like I don't. Yes, I do. But do I have people that sometimes come to me, that I sometimes go to, that just sometimes we cross paths and we talk, you know, about God, and God gives me something to say to them? Yeah. I enjoy that. I love when God gives stuff, gives stuff to me to give to people because it's like, you know, it helps because it's like in my obedience, I'm help, I'm blessing someone else. And then when someone else's obedience, they're going to bless me. It's like, you know, I just want, I want to be at the place where I don't question God when he tells me to do something. I'm not going to question him. I'm not going to say, well, why or do I have to do it now or you know like what do you want me to, like I need to be at the place where I hear God I want to know what he's saying before he even say it like I just gotta look at someone and then I'm I'm up like I don't have to wait for him to ask me to to do anything I just want to like automatic obedience and I don't know like it's just like I don't know we gotta 
we're trying to get there. We're taking steps, like I said, taking steps. It's just a day by day choice. You gotta choose daily. Choose daily to live for God. Choose daily to obey Him. Choose daily to do what He has called you to do because it's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't just like, because I was thinking about this in terms of like, Fasting, I guess, like, if you're saying you're going to fast for, like, a month, but, you know, you fast for, like, two weeks, then, like, two days you want to take off, and then you go back at it, and it's like, okay, but if you took a day off, or if you didn't do it the full day, then it's not really a whole full month, It's and it's just, like, um just about being obedient like it's not really like saying that it's unqualified or disqualified but it's just like if you like oh yeah that's what I was reading I was reading this book well I wasn't reading this book but I picked up a book and I turned to this page and it said you know like a sacrifice or God doesn't demand the things that we choose to sacrifice or something like that basically it's saying like you know we're the ones telling him that we're going to do this. He's not demanding it of us. We're saying, God, I'm giving this to you. I'm giving this as a sacrifice to you. I'm giving this to, I'm doing this to honor you. So it's like, we're, so it's like saying you're going to give someone $5. And it's like, okay, you said you were giving me $5. I didn't ask you for $5. You just said you're going to give it to me. And it was just like, okay. It said, if you're going to, so when I read that, and I said, you know, God isn't demanding the service, but it's as it's a sacrifice. And it kind of hurt me. And I realized that it kind of hurt me because sometimes, in the, I don't think, I'm working on it now. I don't think, I'm more conscious of it now. But, like, in the past, I'd be like, okay, God, I'm going to do this until this time for, like, two weeks. Okay. But it's like one day. Say it ended at, like, 2, but they have, like, something that I want to do at 1. So I said, okay, well, I'll end it at, like, 1, and then tomorrow I'll go to 3. I'll just add an extra hour. It's like, no, you know, you got to be consistent. If you're going to do something, you know, do it. Just do it, like Nike. No, I'm not trying to sell Nike, but it just, I had, I had to say it. But if you're going to do something, you know, do it. Like, stick with it, stay committed, don't break it, and then try to make up for it, I, no, like, you know, you told God that you're going to do it, so you got to stick with it, and so it's like, I don't know, it kind of, I guess it hurt, it hurt me, because it's like, I was in that position, it's like, I want to, stuck between a uh, rock and a hard place, I really don't know what that means, but I hear it a lot, um, I think if it's the situation. So, just saying, like, I want to, like, you know, I want to give these things up for God. I want to honor God with, you know, these things. But it's just like, man, it's hard. I mean, I'm doing it, but I'm just, like, giving an example. It's like, it's hard. It's like, do I really want to do this? Since I really do want to do this, but it's like, I don't know. So say, oh my gosh, say I told God I'll give up spaghetti. Like, like I said, spaghetti is my favorite food. If I gave up spaghetti for a month, well, I couldn't give up spaghetti for a month because I don't even eat it like, like that. Like maybe twice a year. But say I gave up spaghetti forever. Oh my gosh. So if I gave up spaghetti forever, one like tomorrow. Say I, I gave spaghetti forever starting today, and they made spaghetti tomorrow for dinner. I'm like, well, God, I know that I said that I'm going to give up spaghetti, but, you know, this is the only thing they have for dinner, so I'm just going to have to, you know, and it's like, no, it's like, I don't know, it's like if you're going to make a commitment to God, just like... You know, stick with the commitment. Because it's not like he, you know, commanded or demanded you to do it. It's like you said that you are going to do this. 
you don't want to make a liar out of yourself. And that's, like, what it is. Like, if you say that you're going to do something and you end up changing the story, it's like you're making a liar out of yourself. And that's not good. And I'm not saying, you know, that we're liars. But I'm just saying it's like, if you're going to do it, and do it. If you're not going to do it, don't do it. Don't play games with yourself. Don't play games with God. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to be honest with God. Because you don't want to say that you're going to, you know, do something when you know, you know that you're not going to do it. You don't want to do that. Because then that puts you in a position like me. So I'm going to give an example of myself. I wanted, like I said, I enjoyed um, William Murphy. And he was, him, him and his church were doing this thing where he was talking about, um, he was doing a 10-day Daniel fast. I was like, yeah, this sounds good. You know, I might do this. But it's like. I didn't have any food in the house to do a 10-day Daniel fast. So it's like I tried to do it, like, maybe up until 7, and then I ate the food, like, that I want to eat. Well, I'm cutting back on junk foods and sodas and stuff, too. So, basically, what I'm trying to do now is eat healthy anyways. But, like, at 7, I would have been able to, like, eat, like, meats and stuff. But, basically... I couldn't do it, and I sort of felt bad, but I said, you know, I'm doing the sacrifice already, a couple sacrifices, and I said, I just don't have, you know, the resources to do this, so, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, try to say that I'm gonna do something, and I know that, you know, I can't fit the bill to do that, so, you know, sometimes... We can't, you know, we don't want to bite off more than you can chew, I guess is what they'll uh, say. Because then you start choking, then it'll kill you, and you don't want to die. Not before your time, at least. Because we're all trying to make it into heaven. That's a song by Mary Mary. But, um, yeah, we're all trying to make it, you know, into heaven. We're all trying to... But before we get to heaven, we need to make sure that, you know, we do what God has called us to do. We need to make sure that we are in right standing with him, in the right position. It's where he needs us to be in life. <sighs> I feel better now. But, yeah, we need to make sure that we are there. We are there. And we are one with Christ. We need to be one with each other and move on one, move on one accord. Because if we move on one accord, then you know things happen. That's what happened in um, in Acts, Acts two and thirty eight. I'm going to it. just hold on two seconds, please. Acts 2 and 38, which reads, mm, oh wait, wrong one, but this is talking about it. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. But this, okay. It's in the beginning of the chapter. In the beginning of the chapter, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I'll show you where it says that. Right there. And it says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so, as you see, when you move in one accord, get the results that you're looking for. Um, and 
it's really important. This is really important because we need, we need now more than ever, we need a move of God to happen in our lives. We need God to move. We need, we need supernatural stuff because this natural stuff is not cutting it at all. And we need stuff. We need God to, to move because, you know, we can't do it on our own we can't do it on our own and he is the supplier of every need and you know he's our strong tower that fortress that keeps us hidden from evil and darkness so i just pray that this helps somebody it wasn't necessarily all over the place but there wasn't like a direct point I just pray I pray that it helps someone. Um again, I really do appreciate the people that watch these because I know, you know, you guys could be somewhere else. I could be somewhere else. I could be on the street right now. I could be like any place right now, but I'm here at sister's house talking to you guys. Because you guys are listening. Like, you don't understand, like, if no one listened, there probably wouldn't be, you know, there would be no comfort circle without you guys. You guys motivate me, you know, to keep going, you know? It's not about the the downs, but it's about the ups. And it's about the spirit, the living God that is within me and that is within you. And we need to always keep that charged up and energized like the Energizer Bunny. And one of the greatest ways to keep energized is going to a great church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Spirit moves, your spirit reacts to it. And I'm telling you, it charges you up. Another way, listening to praise and worship music. That is, of course, anointed did with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And three is just, you know, well, not three. Well, three, but there's a fourth. Three is, you know, staying. Make sure that your environment, like the people that you hang around, are also spirit-filled people. So, you know, they charge up, you know, conversations with them, which is why it says, let your conversations be holy. Um... What was that? It was, I think, Second Corinthians. Dag. Oh, no, no, no. Ephesians 5 and 19 says, Speak out one to another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments, and making melody with all your heart to the Lord, and giving thanks to Him always. So basically, that's just saying, you know, what I took from it was, you know, when you're all, when we're together, because I looked up scriptures on fellowshipping. So when, when we are fellowshipping together, we need to make sure that, um, you know, keep your conversation seasoned with grace. And that means don't be talking about nasty things. We can, It says with songs and hymns and songs and praise. That means that it has to be about God, you know? Because you're not going to have psalms about smoking weed, drinking, partying at the club. You're not going to have hymns about two chains date last night. You you know, you, it's about God. And that's what the conversations are supposed to be about. And that's why it says that right there. No, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Of all. We need to make sure that we let that be known within our friendly environments. And last, but very not least, to keep your spirit charged, is having a all oh, to do. So cute. You gonna sit down? Here, come sit down. Oh, she can't hear me. Um, it's my niece. She's two. She's almost three. But yeah, last but not least is to have... A personal relationship with Christ. There's no 
nothing better than that is having a personal relationship with Christ. That's how you truly will keep your spirit energized and charged up. And so, you know, so you know, we always need to make sure that um, before we leave an environment, if God, you know, presents presents it we always need to make sure you know that we extend the hand of salvation to anybody who needs it or to those around us i was listening to a periscope uh, by jermaine dolly and he was saying how donnie mcclurkin was saying how like britney not britney but whitney houston's funeral aired like to billions of people and not one christian no one actually extended the hand for salvation to them and so it's just like wow like that was and he was saying that they dropped the ball and it's like i don't want to drop the ball if i ever get to go in front of millions shoot if i go in front of 10 i would love to extend the hand of salvation so i'll do that now the best way that i know how i'll just go to romans 10 9 and 10 wallet thing hello niece it's my other niece okay Romans 10 9 and 10 where it reads I'll show you mm-hmm. right. where it reads here that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt be in thine heart in thine heart has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Basically, what that saying is, because that's King James, so it's kind of hard to understand. Basically, what it's saying is, you know, we have to confess that we are sinners, because we're all sinners, we all sin. We need to make sure that we you know, repent, so we got to turn away from our sins, which means we say we're sorry, but then we stop doing them, you know, and it's not going to be easy, but like I said, you know, you don't want to be, you don't, don't repent, and then keep doing what you're doing, like, try to stop, you know, because you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to become, you know, a liar, you don't want to say you're going to do something, and you don't do it, so, you know, Take it to God. If you're having trouble, take it to God. I learned something today it's in health class. It said, the teacher said, if, you know, if you're addicted to something or if you're craving something and you stop it, try to replace it with something else. You know, replace it with something positive. So, it was this example of someone who was smoking. So, he's trying to smoke. So, you know, Every time, you know, he craves a cigarette, he can, you know, go for a walk or, like, eat an apple, maybe chew on, like, a shawl or something. I don't know. Like, whatever best fits you is what you can use to replace it. So, you just, you know, you repent and you say, yes, I believe. You have to believe in your heart and you have to say with your mouth, yes, I believe. You know that I'm a sinner. Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. And because of that, his blood covers my sins. Now I'm clean. When you repent and he cleans, it cleans, it washes your spirit. And then you, you know, then you just walk. You walk in it. You're saved by the, when they say saved by grace, it's saying his grace is how, you know, when he died on the cross, it graced us with a chance to get to have eternal life. So it you know, that is it's nice. It's nice. Nice deal I would say. So we just need to we need to make sure that we get it, that we have it before, you know, it's too late. But again, I always thank you guys for watching um, I do pray that someone that was saved is saved, 
will be saved, you know, thinking about being saved, because Jesus is awesome, like, aside from him just dying on the cross, like, he, his love, like, could you imagine anyone that you know, die? he didn't just die on the cross, he took on all of our sins, he took on all of our, uh, aches and pains all of our mindsets all of our downfall like he felt the pain that we are feeling now he that's everybody everybody for the whole world he felt it and and on top of that he was ridiculed he was beaten he was uh whipped with the whip that pulled his skin when they pulled it back and then he was nailed to the cross. And then he had a crown thorn pushed into his head. And then he died. And he still rose three days later. Now let me tell you. He did that for me. And he did that for you. But do you know anybody who would do that? And flesh? No. I don't. I couldn't say that. I, I would do know anybody like that but um his love is just like never ending well like it never runs dry that's what um casey j says in her song it it gets real like i don't understand well not under not understand but it's it's like so awesome like having a relationship the Christ is so awesome. Like, you know, there are sometimes some trials in life, but it's like, if I didn't have Christ, I would still have trials, you know? And it'd be worse off trials because I would be off running with who knows who, doing who knows what. Well, God knows because he knows everything. <laughs> oh, God bless you, sweet child. <laughs> the blessings of God be upon you. So, stop it. So, um, yeah, we just need to make sure that we're there because, like, he paid this price for us so that we could be with him. He did it because he loves us. Not because he had to. He did it because he wanted to. Because he wanted us to be with him. And so, you know, I read this one scripture where it said, like, you know, my personal debt the least I can do is serve him. The least that I can do. I can do way more on top of that. By his grace. I can do all things actually through Christ. Who strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. But you know. Like we. We don't want to drop the ball. You know. We as a generation need. As a Christian generation. As a Christian generation. Seeking souls to win to Christ for his mighty army to fight evil in the world we the least that we can do is just allow our lives right now to be you know to shine to be that example for the person next to us or you know our neighbors our nieces our nephews our sisters our brothers our cousins you know those who are there are people who watch us there are people who are looking at us and we need to make sure, you know, that we are consistent in our walk with Christ. Because if we mess up, not saying it as like a, you know, oh, you got to be conscious of everything you do. But it's like, if we mess up, it's like people are watching us. And it's like we are accountable for what we let them see. So if I am talking about, and God put it to me this way. In terms of, like, people who, like, curse, but then, like, say, spit the oracles of God. It's like, you can't, you can't have both of them coming from the same, like, one of them, it, you can't, like, it's like having running water, but poop coming from the, the faucet, like, yeah, I said it, poop, it's like poop. You, it's nasty. Nobody's gonna want to drink from that faucet if they saw or heard or smelled poop coming from it. It's nasty. So, you know, and profanity is just like, it's not, there's, it's, it, there's no use for it. I don't even know why. Like, it just makes, to me, 
it's it's just like why it's like there are word there are words in the English dictionary if you don't want to use the English word use a Spanish word use an Italian word a French word use sign language just please do not use profanity because it makes you seem so unintelligent you know it makes you seem like well I'm not smart enough to think of another word for this so I'm just gonna use this like no there are other words there are other things that you can say like don't put yourself in that position like you people aren't gonna listen to you if you're sitting up here cursing and then you want to talk about God two minutes later and then you go back to cursing like no you can't serve two masters like which one are you gonna serve you know you need to be consistent with your walk because if you do that and people see you do that and they say well they did that so I must be able to do that too and it's like no you know you can't do that and you know they can't do that either so we need to make sure that we aren't giving people the wrong message and that you know we don't want them to think that they're watching you know word network but they end up watching some excuse my language but ratchet reality tv show you know you can't have to it's like the the reality tv show can't be the word network and the word network can't be the reality tv show it's like if you're gonna walk in christ walk in christ if you're gonna walk in the world walk in the world but you can't do both because christ said you know I, you know, be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. And if I try, try to give me some water from a, from a faucet like that, I'd spit it out too. So, yeah. We just gotta do better. We're doing good. But we gotta do better. Because, you know, time is winding up, and it said, you know, I don't know if that was scripture of the day, but it was basically saying, I think your mom's making biscuits. It was basically saying how, like, um, it was basically saying how, like, we, you know, need to make sure that, you know, we're doing our work and make sure that we're, you know, getting it done because the days are evil. You don't want to procrastinate, basically, okay. is what it's saying. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's all for tonight. Again, I thank you guys for watching. You guys are wonderful and you are a blessing. You want to pray? No? I'll pray us out then since my niece doesn't want to pray us out. Um, okay, so, I'm going to pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us here today on this Friday night. I just pray that the, I just pray that the, um, the word was placed on good ground into the hearts of your people. I pray that you really, I pray that you open the eyes of their hearts, Lord. I pray that you just open their ears and I pray that you just keep them, keep them covered in your blood and keep them, um, you know, away from any hurt, harm, danger, seen and seen. I pray that you protect their families. I pray that you protect uh, the vision that you've given them. I just pray that you prosper them in a way that they have never been prospered before, God. I just thank you and I praise you for all that you do. I thank you for what you're doing in me and what you're doing in the ministry, what you're doing my friends and family, and I pray that you're doing the same thing for these people, for all your people, God. And I thank God for my church family and the bishop and all the members and just thank you and praise you forever and ever amen so you guys have a blessed night you want to say anything because i felt you on my shoulder and i felt you wave your hand that'll be all i hope y'all let me know if she said something or did something while i was praying but she was supposed to be praying too but yeah you guys enjoy your Friday night and stay in Christ. I would definitely try it. I don't know. Periscope and every day is kind of hard, but I'll try it. I'll try it just for you guys. So, you guys be blessed.